Well, thanks for everyone for having us. My name is Joseph Prather, founder and CEO of Dime.co. And so this is a very personal company for me. Um, I was born to a teenage mom in Kentucky, born into this world where no one saved money. No one had any confidence about um, control of their own money. They were very defeated and afraid by money. If you think about, I bet there's a lot of Mint.com users, Quicken users, people that have spreadsheets based on their finances in this, in this room. What I'm speaking to, the person I'm speaking to is the opposite user case of that, right? This is someone, including myself, 39 years later, that still feels nervous when I try to log into my U.S. bank account, right? There's just this ingrained idea that there's a negative balance or that there's just a really bad outcome, right? So I used to think this is part of the culture of poverty, but as I moved and you know, started swimming in different circles, I realized that this affects all kinds of different uh, income, age, right? Let's talk about millennials. Millennials are spending a dollar and two cents for every dollar they earn on the aggregate. So you can imagine there's a lot of really bad individual cases going on there, right? Three in 10 millennials don't even have a savings account. So they don't even have a basic mechanism to start saving any money at all, right? So I put all this together and I thought, how can I develop a solution that actually helps people change their habit, ch start developing some personal savings habits, right? Because the habit is really the hardest part, right? So what Dime is, is a very simple program. It's it, basically we text a user, right? So a user will set a goal, say they want to pay down $1,000 of credit card debt, or they want to go to Hawaii with a friend, or they want to start an emergency savings account, right? So it's a very simple login, uh, set up, user setup account. And then what we do, we, we text them a few times a week, and we say, hey, do you want to pop over 10 bucks? Do you want to move $20 over, right? A few times a week we say this, and the user, all they have to do to start this habit is reply with the letter yes, or, a, or the letter Y, or the word yes, right? And so that money gets queued up, and once a week gets ACH'd into an account that we hold on their behalf, right? So there's some Fitbit element to this, right? We make it really easy to start building that savings muscle, and we don't face the user with a lot of negative, right? Um, a lot of these users have really uh, ingrained negativity about their own finances, and so when they come to Dime, they see positive things, right? So you can see up here, keep it going, text yes to move 20 bu 25 bucks to savings. All they have to say is yes. And then from that, we can say, 25 bucks say, way to go. Keep it up and you'll save 4,900 bucks this year. So these users start with a short-term mentality and our goal is to stretch it to a more long-term mentality, right? And um, so we start showing them these results that over the course of a month, they saved 300 bucks. And they, they said, well, savings was always something I wanted to do. I, I knew I should do it, but I never knew how to do it. And so now when they start seeing these results, that's what happens, right? So we did a small friends and family uh, alpha test. Um, people really enjoyed using the service. 75% of our users interacted with the text messaging one and a half times a week. People went from zero savings to about 40 to 90 bucks a week in savings, right? And so just based on that result, um, we are really excited that um, a large known financial services company has funded our beta for the next six months. So we are off to the races. Um, we are, our next milestone is developing three, in three months, a thousand users and increasing this engagement with our service, right? So we're raising on top of that. Um, we've had a lot of interest from retailers because if you think about, people save money for a reason, right? You don't just save money in a, in a vacuum, right? So you either save for, this, for an emergency, you save for something you're trying to acquire, and so retailers down the line have a lot of interest in who these users are that are saving for these big ticket, hard to attain items, right? So that's where we are. Um, I'd like to just open it up because I'm sure that's where most of the discovery comes from. Sure. So what is your, what is the cost to your user or your revenue model? I mean, you're trying to save money. Are the user going to spend money to use your product or? Sorry, so I don't quite understand. Do the, the user, are, they have to spend money to use your product or how do you found Product. What's your revenue? Oh, how do we? What's our yeah. revenue? So it's free for the user, right? So the user, we make money on participating in interest on the float. We also make money when someone spends for a specific item, right? So say they're saving for a trip, there's uh, retailer commissions there, right? We're also, if you think about a Mint.com revenue model, we're opening up the financial discussion. So if we can help them get to a lower interest credit card rate, or we can help them get connected with a mortgage broker, there's you know, there's back-end money there as well. And then the retailer data and ads as well. Sure. Way in the back. Yeah, so based on your tests, to 
what extent does it affect the user's lifestyle if they don't have to say the war so they can, again, live sort of the consistent lifestyle that they were living? And so have you noticed any delta there, and how do users have managed that change? Cool. That's um, not something we've measured, right? It's more anecdotal, you know, based on just interviewing. Um, what we've noticed is people, that what they tell us is that they miss the service, right? Because just in the way that you go to Target and you need two things and you leave with ten, right? If you don't have any kind of pushback, and that's what basically we're pushing back on, is that buy or buy, don't buy moment. When you go to a coffee shop, sure, I'll get a muffin as well, right? So I don't know any specific data on that. That would be something great to do in the beta. Um, but it's what we're doing is providing some kind of resistance against, sure, I've got five extra bucks, I'll spend it on this. Is the regulatory regime for holding money and Right, so he's asking about the, the uh, regulatory aspect. So we're partnered with a payments company that has an escrow, that we're able to use an escrow account, uh, FBO for each of our users. So the burden is on them, and uh, we're, we're free and clear. And we're also in due diligence with a major banking partner to run things on a, on a larger rail as well. How does the user get their money back? How does the user get their money back? Right, so there's text prompts. And I have to mention as well that we have an iOS app that is in um, the approval process right now. Um, the, the user, and so the, through the iOS or through the text prompts, there's a series of text prompts that you can say. It's a withdrawal, and you can withdraw that amount of money, basically. And let me just add, if anyone's interested in onboarding, um, right now we're in a sandbox, so if you go to dime.co and just create um, just the first page of your info, and it'll be you know name, uh, email, and phone number, and then we'll just let you know the next couple of days when it's ready for production and uh, full onboarding. Anything else? Thank you. Thanks very much.